Hi, this is Paul Tyler, and welcome to another episode of the Reimagine Podcast. And uh, today we continue our exploration of companies and founders really changing the face of of, uh, the retirement industry. Laura, good to have you here as well. And can you tell people, who who do we have in the studio with us today? Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be back, Paul. Actually, coming coming to us today from Amsterdam is Amsterdam. William, Amsterdam. It's uh, you know global outreach here. Uh, is William Littlefield, president and CTO of Wisest. So we're excited to have William with us today and to learn a bit more about both him, his background, and then the company itself. So with that, William, for the benefit of our listeners, you know, please share a bit about your background and what drove you to become an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Thank you, Laura, and thanks so much for inviting me to the podcast. Uh, I'm one of those people that since childhood always knew that I I was going to be an entrepreneur. Uh, Certainly just love to to buck conventionality and and, uh, work on building things and have always been passionate about entrepreneurship. Uh, I was lucky to grow up with a couple parents that were self-employed, so I'd always harbored that entrepreneurial attitude since a young age. Uh, So as president and CTO of Wisest, we're trying to build a next generation investment platform. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about, to, to, to your point, uh, how I ended up here. It's, it's sort of a, a colorful road, a little bit different than your average uh, entrepreneurial journey. Uh, so I actually spent a vast majority of my youth uh, growing up in Dallas, Texas, um, and training competitively as an ice skater. Wow. Um, in particular, as a single skater. And so I spent most of my youth uh, surrounded by uh, some Olympic coaches and athletes, and, and really had a, an identity as an athlete for the first uh, big part of my life. And so I had the opportunity to, to compete at, at U.S. Nationals, and uh, the biggest thing that that taught me was that serious progress or, or making making something that, that really competes in, in, in a world-class market requires uh, years of dedication um, and, and focusing on it. Uh, with, with the right team and, and, and the right uh, consistency. Uh, so that, that's definitely been a core part of my background. It's really formative for me. Uh, when I went to university, I had to decide where I could continue sort of pursuing that dream and, and also get a, an education. And so in the United States, there's only a handful of cities where you can continue, continue training at a pretty high level and, and also go to school. Uh, and so Cleveland, Ohio happened to be one of them. And so the, the big research university in Cleveland is Case Western Reserve. Um, they have some great partnerships with institutions like the Cleveland Clinic and the Cleveland Museum of Art. And so I ended up going up there. And while I was there, uh, in my first couple years, I ended up having an ankle injury that really sidelined my athletic career. And so I had to have surgery. Uh, and I ended up finding myself at university sitting in a dorm in crutches. Uh, and so I was watching a lot of my friends at the time compete at the Olympics, even medal at the Olympics. In particular, this was around the Sochi Games. Uh, and so I wasn't the kind of person to sit at home in self-pity. Uh, and so I'd always been uh, interested in technology, and this was when I really decided to build my first technology company. And I was one of those nerdy kids that taught themselves to code when he was in middle school. And so naturally, uh, looking at software was 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 the next logical step. Uh, And so my first company, I was actually CEO of that venture, and that was a geolocation-based mobile application that did flash sales for brick and mortar. Uh, So the idea was that you would be walking down a main street, uh, and a mom and pop store might be able to send out a push notification that said 30% off for the next 30 minutes only to the nearest 50 people in a quarter mile radius. Uh, and so this was relatively novel back in 2014. Uh, today we see a lot of these kinds of tactics today, uh, but the idea was to, to try and bring e-commerce style flash sales to brick and mortar. Uh, and so we called it, uh, or our, our tagline was, was making it Black Friday every day. Did, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I gotta, did you ever see the uh, video, I think it, it was a little viral, somebody who did that for a sneaker store, I think in, Mexico City, where you'd have to go into the mall with your phone app, and sale would go off, and the first person in the store got the sneakers, or thir- three people, and they, <laughs> I literally saw videos of people running through the stores <laughs> to get this, to get these shoes. I don't know, is that, uh, I don't know, did you ever see that company? 
You hit the nail on the head there, Paul. I can't say I've seen that particular viral video, but that's exactly who we were trying to target. Uh, so our main sort of uh, target client was real estate investment trusts, REITs, uh, trying yeah. to basically uh, bring that sort of interactive experience uh, and maximize price per square foot inside of malls. So, so that was exactly what we were going for. Uh, since I was a first time founder, I ended up having some co-founders for that, that product. Um, they ended up having some uh, personal experiences where they decided to take a step away from the company. and. Uh, since I was a first-time founder, I didn't quite get the vesting schedule right. And so when they stepped away, it essentially tanked that company. Uh, and I decided uh, that I need to go back home and kind of lick my wounds. And I wanted to learn uh, to basically build a company uh, as a CTO as well as a CEO. And so I never wanted that to happen to me again. And so I wanted to be able to, to manage all the engineering by myself. And that's exactly what you alluded to before, Paul. Um, I think it might have been before we started recording which is I went back home to Dallas, spent some time at Southwest Airlines as a senior engineer, and, and then spent several years at Visa, uh, which is where I got all my FinTech experience. Uh, last but not least, I, I ended up uh, writing a graduate dissertation um, on artificial intelligence. Um, and I have a personal background as an academic philosopher, which is what brought me here to Amsterdam, doing some research here at the university, uh, work on things like applied ethics and, and artificial intelligence. Uh, but when I finished that thesis, I ended up uh, communicating to my entrepreneurial network uh, that knew me when I built my first company that I was interested in getting back in the arena. Uh, and so that's when they told me about uh, my business partner, Axel Thibon, who uh, is a terrific uh, Frenchman that operates out of Cleveland today. Uh, and he has a background as a banker and before that as an engineer. And so I met him at a Starbucks a couple years ago, and that's when we began building Wises. Okay. Wow. That that there there's a, there are a lot of threads <laughs> to pull on that one. Um, I, I guess uh, you know, it, it kind of stepping back. So Southwest and Visa and to, to where you are today. Talk to us. Talk to us a little bit about the company. Who? What does Wises do? And then I want to step us back and sort of talk about what lessons you've you've learned from these different industries. Gladly. Yeah. So so Wises is a new kind of investing platform. That's the most straightforward way to explain it. It's an investment platform where instead of investing directly in stocks, bonds, ETFs, or cryptos yourself, you're able to assemble your own team of financial experts uh, and invest directly through them. The core idea of Wisest is kind of that plenty of people know, really everyone knows in this day and age, that investing is a key part of wealth building. Uh, and yet, there's still a lot of people that don't necessarily feel confident doing it themselves, directing themselves on some of these apps like Robinhood or Coinbase. And we wanted to find a way to bring the kind of expertise that's leveraged by people in the 1% uh, and, and democratize that so everyone could, could invest with world-class expertise. And so Wiseness is a platform that allows you to do that by investing directly through experts. And who, who are those experts? So the t reason we use the term financial experts is because we offer financial advisors on the platform, uh, but we also cater to portfolio managers. So in terms of financial expert on the platform, uh, someone who's on Wisest as an expert holds either a Series 65 or Series 66, or they're a chartered financial analyst. Uh, and so those people are able to then create a portfolio on Wisest, which is kind of like a recipe. Uh, it's just a model portfolio, or you can even think of it as like an ETF. And from there, when you find an expert that you like, uh, at, the sing at a single touch, you're able to replicate that portfolio on your behalf. Interesting. You know, I'm, I'm actually on a board of a, 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 a broker dealer here in the, uh, in the U.S., and uh, a smaller one, independent, uh, with, with a bunch of independent uh, uh, registered reps, and we had a lot of conversations around wh where's the value? Is it the advisor, you know, calling and managing large psychology, or is it, you know, the model itself? And and you know, up until as you know, I'm uh, you know lecturing to you know to, to the expert here, but you know, t ten years ago, all this stuff was bundled. Now you know you, you start to see each one of those pieces being able to be deconstructed. Wh where do you think the biggest value is? Is is it the model? Is it the person? Is it the advisor steering the uh, the customer into your platform? 
Well, I think I think you 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 phrase that exactly how we think about the problem as well, there, Paul. Uh, when you think about money, it's it's such a personal thing, um, and so many of these investment platforms are, uh, especially a lot of the passive ones, are, are taking that human aspect out of it. Uh, despite the fact that there's been these big trends in behavioral economics uh, showing just how psychological. Um, things like money and retirement are. Uh, and so for us, what we try and do at Wisest is we try and allow people to have that human connection in their, in their investment life in a way that's different uh, than just picking stocks and bonds or things that are rather abstract. Uh, and we try and simplify it by, by making that human connection. Um, so a, an easier way of putting it might be that just about everyone feels confident judging whether or not someone else's interests align with theirs. Everyone feels confident evaluating other people, uh, but not everyone feels confident necessarily evaluating financial statements. And that's okay. Uh, not everyone wants to necessarily learn all of the, the details of, of looking through a, a company's statements, and many people just simply don't have the time to. Uh, so we promote financial literacy. At the same time, we also recognize that uh, you aren't necessarily going to want to spend all your free time trying to become a, a financial expert at home. And so with Wises, what we try and do is we try and make it so that instead of having to be an expert on your own on, on one of these self-guided platforms, you can have an expert uh, to assemble your portfolio. You can invest in them. And then once you do, Wisest allows you to follow your portfolio's moves uh, when those experts write posts, uh, kind of like Twitter posts, uh, explaining the way that they're going to tweak your portfolio uh, based on moves in the market. So something that caught my eye was the gamification that you offer and, you know, looking at the human behavior and, and the elements that go within it. Talk to us about how that gamification kind of informs what clients choose to do. So that's obviously a very sensitive topic given the situation that we've seen unfold with Robin Hood. And uh, I certainly want to give a shout out to a, a great piece we were mentioned in in Forbes where Wisest was actually called an anti-Robin Hood. Uh, and that's because for Wisest, we try and leverage gamification to discourage uh, sort of speculative trading behavior. Uh, we really try and emphasize Wisest as an investment platform, not just as a trading or speculative platform. And the way that that manifests is in terms of gamifying the experience, we're really simply talking about improving user engagement. How can we use sort of modern digital strategies to improve the experience you'd have investing in a way that makes it feel more uh, akin to different platforms that you're already comfortable and confident using, uh, rather than necessarily trying to motivate you to be gambling uh, with your investing. So in terms of the gamification, what one of the things we do is we organize our financial experts uh, very transparently into leaderboards. And so from there, you can just, as a retail investor, see in one single interface which financial expert is performing the best this quarter, this month, or this year. Uh, so in terms of gamification, we, we're trying to use it in your interests rather than against your interests. So... so uh... I want to be an expert on your advice, on your platform. Tell, t tell me how I go about it. What, sh what is the screen? Do, uh, do I have to be a CFA? Do I have to, uh, uh, if I'm an RIA, is that fine? Oh, I'm an insurance agent? Yeah, by the way, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so why is this, from a regulatory standpoint, uh, we don't technically need you to be credentialed because of the structure of the platform. Uh, this is important because what our retail investors ought to know is that while they're copying the portfolio or replicating the portfolio of an expert, that expert is never actually touching your money. Why is this just going to be the one managing all those transactions? The expert is just providing a portfolio recipe. Uh, so from a regulatory perspective, that's not much different than someone publishing an investor memo. Uh, or, or just a newsletter where they, they say, here's what we recommend you buy and sell. Uh, now, that being said, uh, in order to, to, to ensure that our investors feel confident on Wisest, 
we actually are the ones that enforce that people need to have a Series 65, Series 66, or be a CFA. Uh, so everyone that we allow on the platform has been vetted in-house before we allow them to be a designated financial expert. And uh, if I'm on your platform, how do I how do I track customers? Now, is this typically are, are you finding this is my the full time focus of advisors, or is this sort of like and I've got a practice and I've got something over here, and this is this is another way for people to meet and see me, and uh, and and follow my my recommendations. Great question. So in terms of what we're actually seeing from financial experts, we have always thought that this would be a great opportunity for people to have a kind of secondary income. But the real way to think about it is that for a financial expert, this is an opportunity to, to serve a lot of different retail investors that maybe you wouldn't have had access to before. So in the traditional financial advisor, uh, advisee relationship, uh, you're talking about someone walking down maybe to a Charles Schwab uh, and sitting down for a consultation and, and getting sort of a personal recommendation. That is something which simply doesn't appeal to a lot of demographics today. Uh, I just can't imagine many people that are Gen Z doing that kind of relationship. Um, and that might also be onerous for people that, that are in the retirement community as well, uh, for transportation reasons, of course. Uh, but the, the point is, is that with Wisest, a financial expert has the opportunity to construct a portfolio model. Uh, they don't have to worry about any overhead. They don't have to worry about any compliance. They don't have to worry about actually managing funds. Uh, all they have to do is publish a really simple recipe uh, that they believe in. Uh, and so this can even be someone that's a quantitative researcher, not necessarily just a traditional financial advisor. Uh, but someone thinks that's, that thinks they know how to build a successful portfolio uh, and maybe doesn't have a way to get it out there to a very large number of people, a national audience, uh, or maybe uh, is, is operating um, in a private capacity or, or this is maybe something they do on the side. So this allows a financial advisor to have different retail investors invest with them far outside their immediate regional circumstances and it also allows people that may not have a direct way to offer their portfolio to an audience uh, to sell it on the Wisest platform. You know, it's, it's an interesting approach um, in, in thinking about how people can kind of get their thought processes out, as you mentioned. And it makes me, it makes me curious. Did you see change in behavior, whether it's a more people coming onto the platform in that type of a role or more investment over the last 16 months. What is what has that done for your business? Right. So Wisest has been in a phase over these last, uh, well, really through the pandemic, really, where we've been transitioning as a company from exploring the thesis of Wisest and uh, building a simulator version of the product to where we are now going to market with a custodian broker dealer as you mentioned, Paul, uh, and actually going to be launching the production uh, investment trading platform later this year. Uh, so we did see uptake in the platform, um, increased engagement, increased interest uh, related to a lot of the dynamics in, in financial markets that we've seen throughout the pandemic. Uh, for us, we're really focusing on trying to get the platform in a place where people are going to have it as a tool. Uh, to improve their financial circumstances once the pandemic starts to succeed. Yeah, and you mentioned the the personality of the investor. You know, you're, you're attempting to attract. Do you, do you see that um, that particular profile uh, skew towards an, an age or generation uh, group in particular? Are you targeting, you know, millennials? Are you targeting? Um, or do you sort of see this pro? The, the you, do you think your platform is going to appeal to a certain segment of every age group? So with Wisest, we initially built it by trying to focus on how could we create an investing tool that would modernize the investment experience by bringing along a lot of digital strategies we knew already worked. Uh, and so in that sense, we were kind of bringing a lot of conventions to the fore, which had been proven out by other 
social media applications, other uh, investing applications, and, and trying to, to simply improve the experience of investing with a portfolio manager or financial advisor uh, using these tried and true strategies. That being said, what we ended up finding out was that there are several demographics that are really interested in investing in WISIS that aren't just young professionals. Uh, so one thing that we discovered when we did a survey of about 293 retail investors uh, and financial experts was that Wisest has a equal uh, pull in its audience from both women and men. And this is encouraging because a lot of financial platforms today, trading platforms like Robinhood or Common Stock, uh, are often male dominated. Um, and so something about the wisest offering is, is appealing to, to women better than some of these other uh, alternatives. The other thing we're trying to do is we, we offer portfolios up and down the spectrum. So financial experts aren't confined to one kind of strategy. So someone might come on the platform as a financial expert and create a portfolio that explicitly appeals to young professionals. Maybe they want to invest in minority-owned businesses or renewables or technology companies. Uh, alternatively, there's some financial experts that come on the platform and they say, hey, I'm making a retirement portfolio with this kind of horizon, with these kinds of products, and you can expect these kinds of returns. <coughs> so it's a tool that's really agnostic to the kind of portfolio that, that's being marketed on it. Uh, wh wh what did you take with you from Southwest Airlines that applies to financial planning? <laughs> uh, so I'm very proud to be an alum of Southwest Airlines. It's a tremendous company, obviously just ultra famous for their, for their uh, corporate culture and, and deservedly so. The thing I probably learned a lot from Southwest Airlines uh, beyond spending great time with great people there was first off it was my first opportunity to work in a highly regulated industry and that's something where you begin to learn how your deployment practices as a software engineer are going to be a little bit different when you're taking that extra step of precaution in a highly regulated space so learning how they navigated that or managed their QA process uh, with a little bit more uh, attention was was definitely a valuable experience. I would say the other thing was was more cultural, like we were just alluding to, where it's incredible how people within Southwest were willing to give so much of themselves and so much of their lives to the company uh, because they felt valued and fulfilled and purpose-driven. And that's something we've tried to keep in mind as well uh, internally. And, you know, along the same lines, what are some of the lessons you took from all of your athletic training and your athletic career, that whole movement within your life? What have, what have you carried over? That's something that I probably think about a lot, but haven't had the opportunity to articulate very much. So you'll have to excuse me if I'm, if I'm thinking or, or articulating this extemporaneously on the fly. Uh, I would say I had the benefit of training with some very uh, tough loving coaches and friends and that sort of discipline has definitely carried over into my business life and, and made me obsessed with uh, things like productivity hacking and a lot of the other things you, you hear from Silicon Valley and and uh, but I would say the the thing that has been most valuable is that so many startups especially early stage startups have a hard time actually materializing everything that they hoped to um, and that's because between fundraising and the idea there is this massive valley, uh, this crevasse, which is, is just really difficult to, to navigate through. Um, in, in startups, everyone loves talking about the sort of glory of raising these multi-million dollar rounds of venture capital, and they love the romance of the idea. 
about how you're going to build this novel, beautiful thing that no one's done before. And those are wonderful parts of the conversation, uh, but they ignore the some of the really difficult things that happen in between. And so for me, the thing that athletics provided was the realization of, of what it's like to make a very long-term goal that takes years to pursue, uh, and the experience of how performing steady work uh, over a long period of time is just as important, if not more important, than having some great days or great months here or there. It's really uh, the long haul, and, 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 and with startups, it's it's a marathon race as well. And, and being able to keep that in mind uh, is is crucial. That that that's great. Um, well, well, tell us what's what's next. So you said you're going from sort of you've you've got the pilot, you're headed into production. Um, what are your goals for the next uh, year as a company? So with Wisest, we ended up trying to explore sort of our new kind of trading strategy by launching that free simulator. And that was to test out a lot of the features. It was to explore how people might respond to this different kind of hybrid investment tool. It was also to explore how we could improve engagement through things like education and, and gamification uh, without, again, stimulating bad kinds of behavior. Uh, and so we've taken those lessons and we're using those while we integrate to that custodian broker dealer uh, to try and take it to market with a pretty sophisticated product. Uh, so, so many startups uh, these days are, are often going to market uh, with sort of a simplest version of their prototype. Uh, we, since we were in a highly regulated space and a capital intensive space, had more of a, a, a longer prototyping experience uh, while we raised our, our initial capital. And so the, what we're trying to take to market will, will be a more full-fledged version of the vision uh, than maybe other folks take as their, as their first go-to-market product. Um, so that will include social features, uh, game, gaming features, uh, or gamified features, and uh, certainly the, the investing and trading capabilities we talked about. What we're trying to do over this next year, once we take that to market, is we're also looking at different ways to offer Wisest as a B2B2C product. Uh, so there's a lot of financial institutions which maybe have portfolio products in-house, but mm -hmm. don't have any kind of client interface or client application for people to access them through. Uh, and so we're also looking at pilot programs with financial institutions to be able to offer Wisest uh, through those financial institutions. And you might see a bank offer Wisest uh, as a white labeled application or as a partnered application where they're offering just their financial experts or just their portfolios in their version of Wisest. Oh, this is great. Laura, what other questions do you think we have? Today for William. You know, I would say um, you've covered a little bit of it, but are there specific types of partnerships you're looking for? We're really interested uh, in pretty much the whole spectrum of different kinds of financial institutions. Uh, we think Wises can be offered, uh, especially to smaller institutions, which don't necessarily have a wealth management offering or certainly not digital wealth management offering just yet. Uh, we're also interested in partnering with benefits programs to offer Wisest uh, alongside uh, things like your 401k, um, and we're exploring different kinds of partnerships to bring WISES to uh, associations of financial advisors or different kinds of financial experts. That's great. Excellent. Well, hey, William, thanks so much for the time, and uh, if, if people want to find uh, what you're doing, it's WISES.com, correct? And, That's right. Uh, and what's the best way to reach out to you? Uh, I'm always available at, at LinkedIn uh, at, as William Littlefield, William J. Littlefield II, uh, or I'm also, you can follow me on Twitter at WJ Littlefield II. Excellent. All right. Hey, well, William, thanks for your time, Laura. It was great. And, uh, you know, thanks everybody to, who's listening to the show and uh, give us feedback, recommend us to friends. And uh, uh, as you find other startups or, or founders who uh, you think would make a, a very interesting discussion. Let us know. So thanks for joining us and tune in again next week for another episode of the Reimagine podcast. Thanks. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Paul. 
We want to especially thank today's sponsors, Launch and Symmetra. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and recommend us on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more great information about this company and other great startups at imagine.nfg.com.